The objective of this video is to distinguish between continuous time and discrete time signals as well as elaborate on the differences on analog and digital signals. So signals are a function of one or more independent variables. So for convenience herein we would only consider time as an independent variable but of course the number of variables uh, can increase for a given signal. So let us classify the signals into its respective kinds. So primarily we have continuous time signals right and we can also say that this is continuous time as CT and of course we can have a discrete time signals that is DT. Now the continuous time and discrete time signals are different from analog and digital as far as the understanding is con uh, concerned by means of a set of examples let us quantify what are uh, continuous time digital and continuous time analog signals as well as discrete time digital and analog signals so we can have a matrix and on the columns we can have continuous time and discrete time moreover on the rows we could have analog and then we could have digital. So let us look into an example of a continuous time analog signal. So we have a time domain T, and for that we could have any signal. So this signal can have infinite amplitudes and it is continuous on time. So that is why it's called continuous time analog signal. Next, if we perform sampling, that is we take the values of this signal at particular instant of time and those values should be integer multiples so for simplicity this t would convert to n right and we would be taking sample values so these sample values could be like that and so on so as i mentioned n is an integer so this could be 1, 2, this could be 0, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, right? But at the same time, the distance between these two uh, can be referred as the time Ts. So an integer multiple of Ts is, given us, is giving us a specific value in time frame. This is our continuous time analog and then this is our discrete time analog signal. Analog because on the y axis uh, we can have infinite values. Now let us move towards continuous time digital signals. And for that, again, we would have a time t, and then we can have a certain specific value, and that value would be continuous. So on the y axis, we can have this value. Now this signal is continuous on y axis on the time frame, but on the y axis, it is either taking a value of plus one or a minus one. Right. So this is continuous time digital signal. And finally, we can have discrete time digital signal. And that could be something like right. So we have discrete values in time, and each value is taking a specific amplitude. So this would make it digital. Now let us look into some of the examples of these signals. The continuous time analog signals, this could be uh, the analog clock that you have. Continuous time digital signal is again the digital clock. Discrete time analog signal is a rather tricky one and for that we have stock exchange. And in stock exchange, the values are updated after regular intervals of time and the stock values can go up and down and similarly, if you are uh, calculating the temperature at a particular instant of time after certain time interval, then that would be discrete time analog signal as well. Then discrete time digital signal, uh, that could be something like your grade, where N is the number of courses that you are registered to, and then each course can be classified into either a pass or a fail. So you could either have a pass grade or a fail grade. 
Now, analog to digital conversion is also a very fundamental area in signal and systems. And for that, say we have a signal X of T that could be a Y signal. So this would pass through sampling device. And eventually over here, you would have X of N. That is, it has become discrete. And then you would pass it through a quantizer. And finally, encoder. So this is our digital signal. And over here, we had our analog signal. This device as a whole is called analog to digital conversion. And of course, the reverse would be digital to analog conversion. So over here, we have a continuous time analog signal, then discrete time analog signal. Over here, we would have discrete time digital signal, which is thereby forwarded after encoding in a digital format uh, using some signaling schemes. Note that this X of N is equivalent to X of N is the integer and then T is the time and T. That is when T is equal to NT, we are having this value XN. Some further details about analog to digital conversion is mentioned in uh, this card above and also some signaling schemes that I have mentioned is also given in this video link over here.